In this video, we are going to bring you more of the unusual everyday carry, tech and travel gear which has found its way to Gadget HQ. Let's get into it. Okay, first up we have this. This is a screwdriver, but not any old screwdriver. This is from Goodscrew, and yes, you heard that right. And they describe this as the perfect EDC screwdriver, although I see this as more desk-based than pocket-friendly. To me, this is a cross between a screwdriver, a fidget toy, and a work of art. It takes this standard quarter inch bit, which is held in place with a strong magnet, and it has this frictionless bearing head, which sits in the palm of the hand and spins for a very long time. And as a fidget gadget, this is very addictive. As a screwdriver, it's also very nice to use with this grippy rotating shaft. It sounds rude. Good screw incorporates a vast range of different materials into their designs, which include steel, copper, brass, zirconium, and titanium, with a range of unique finishes. This one is made from a Damascus titanium with an oil slick finish, which they call Ultimanium. The screwdriver comes with 24 quarter inch bits and some spare bearings and some stickers. And you might notice the strap line here, which is go screw yourself. And also included is this handwritten card which shows what this is and where it was made. And also we have this certificate of legitness complete with a wax seal to confirm that this is indeed as legit AF. They also have a companion bit holder to go with the screwdriver which I have here and this is called the revolver. No prizes for guessing why. And it holds eight bits as you can see here and this one is a rather strange mix of Damascus titanium and copper. It spins on bearings too and when combined with the screwdriver provides hours of fidgety desk entertainment. This is not a cheap option. The combined screwdriver and bit holder start at $170 for the brass version, which I actually prefer, right up to $430 for their screw preem set with lots of options in between. The screwdriver on its own starts at $85 and wraps up from there. And there are a couple of sizes to choose from. To find out more, check out the Good Screw website and I'll include a link in the description below. And a big thank you to them for sending out this sample for review. Next up we have this. Now this is the Zendure Super Minigo power bank. And when it comes to power banks, they don't come much stranger than this one. It's designed to look like a camera, although I'm not entirely sure why. And it has these plastic shiny copper finishes and lots of rather unusual design details, which include this LCD display, which shows the status of the power bank, but it's actually quite hard to read through this shiny mirror finish. So I think you're either going to love or hate this based on this rather strange design. But if you ignore that for the moment, this is actually a very capable power bank. It has a 10,000 milliamp hour capacity, which is 37 watt hours. So that's quite respectable. And it also has magnetic inductive wireless charging with a 15 watt maximum output. Also here we have a USB-C output, which offers a 20 watt power delivery mode. And that can charge an iPhone 13 to 50% in around 30 minutes. And there's enough capacity in here at 10,000 milliamp hours to charge most phones twice. There's also a USB-A output for legacy devices. And I don't know if you have noticed this, but there are in fact some USB-C devices that can only be charged from a USB-A output. So I'm always happy to see a USB-A output on my power bank. This power bank can charge three devices at the same time. So one magnetically and then two from the two outputs there. It also has something called X charge mode, which is for very low power devices and stops this thing switching off when it's charging something like your earphones. The raised ridges here protect that screen from being scratched when it's on a flat surface. 
And if you want to know the weights and dimensions, I'll put those on the screen now. In terms of the price, this is just coming to market now. It can be pre-ordered at the time of filming and is going to be around 50 to $70. And so if you want a very capable power bank that just happens to be disguised as a camera, then well, you're in luck. These are called Iron Tide shorts. I backed them earlier this year on Kickstarter. They are the perfect travel shorts and they are pretty unique. The big question here is where do you put your phone or perhaps your car key fob when you go swimming? Do you leave it on the beach and hope it's there when you get back or do you leave it behind altogether? Or perhaps you might take a waterproof pouch or dry bag, but where do you put that when you get into the water? Now phones nowadays are waterproof but they're not designed to cope with the high pressure associated with jumping in or falling in and you don't really want sand and grit flowing into that charging port. These shorts offer a great solution because they have a fully waterproof pocket sewn in from a company called Fidlock, one of the best innovators in this space. And you can see it here. It has a fold over flap which is held in place with neodymium high density magnets and they also hold it sealed closed. So effectively you've got a double seal here and there's loads of space in here. In fact, big enough to take Apple's biggest iPhone Pro Max and that goes in there with room to spare. So it might not be just your phone, it might be your car key fob as well, which you can't really get wet and can't risk leaving on the beach. Or what about if you happen to have a passport with you, you can't really leave that anywhere. They will all fit in here. And apparently this has been tested to withstand a hundred foot depth. These are not only swim shorts, but can be used for daily shorts too. So if you're traveling light, these could be the only shorts you need with you on a trip. It has a couple of pockets on here. There's a pocket on the back with a zip and all the zips on here are YKK, so the best quality you could hope for. So that adds a little bit of security so you don't get your back pocket picked. Then we have a cargo pocket on the front here, also with a zip. Then we have a hidden pocket here, which is referred to as a tactical pocket. And that could be for something like a knife or potentially a multi-tool or a flashlight or something like that. Then we have a metal D-ring here and that could be used for attaching the rest of your keys when your car key fob is in the waterproof pocket. The fabric here has some stretch for comfort. It has water resistant properties and silver ions to eliminate bacteria and odor. It dries super quickly and uses recycled plastic in the construction. I've been using these now throughout the summer and they've been really great. In terms of price, they cost me about £60, although that was on Kickstarter. So I imagine they're probably a little bit more than that now, but in my view, really worth it. Next up we have this, and this is the Lumintop Thor 2 LEP flashlight. It's worth spending a moment just to explain what LEP is. And it stands for Laser Excited Phosphor. And this is a different technology to the more familiar LED or light emitting diode technology. They are relatively new to the flashlight market when compared with LED and they work in a very different way. In short, in here we have a blue laser that fires a beam onto a phosphor element and then that element emits an intense white light. And the light is usually focused using lenses with no light spill so you get a very narrow but intense beam. For the intensity, these lights draw less power than an equivalent LED light and they don't run as hot. Although like all powerful flashlights, it will drop down in power as the flashlight starts to heat up. And to be clear, it doesn't actually emit a laser light. The laser is used internally to trigger the phosphor to produce that intense white light that the flashlight emits. So that's the technology in a nutshell and this is the Thor 2 flashlight. It uses an 18350 battery in here, which is quite a small battery, but it keeps the flashlight very compact. But the good news is you can actually buy an extension tube that allows you to use an 18650 battery. Now this battery is three and a half times the capacity of the 18350, so you get roughly three and a half times the duration. This flashlight has just two power settings, 350 lumens 
at high and 40 lumens at low and if you're familiar with flashlights that does sound remarkably low. For example this Rovivon A8 which is my everyday carry flashlight emits a maximum output of 650 lumens twice the power output of this as far as luminous intensity goes however that just goes to show the difference in the technology used here because whereby that has a range of maybe 20 meters this has a range of 1800 meters that is one mile in terms of operation it's really simple to use you simply press the tail switch once comes on at the high level press it again and it drops to the low level press it twice and it activates strobe and that's all there is to it you'll see here on the base we have some glowing LED lights. They are on when the flashlight is off and that's to help you find the flashlight in the dark. I personally think it's a little bit unnecessary. Also around the head here we have some different colored strips and they glow when the light is on. Not quite sure why. And also there's an internal ring around here and that glows when the flashlight is on and also when the flashlight is off. So you've got all these sort of glowing elements to this flashlight. I don't really think it's necessary, but it doesn't affect the operation of the flashlight, which is actually really good. This is about $200 and the extension tube is about $20. So a lot compared to a traditional LED light, but actually quite affordable for an LEP light. So who's it for? Well, that is actually quite hard to say. Some people suggest that these are good for weapon mounted lights, but because it's such a narrow beam, you have to be right on target. So it's not ideal for helping you to find your target. When you use an LEP light, you actually get a visible beam and that traces back to the source. So I don't think these are actually particularly useful for military use. With that in mind, it got me thinking that this could actually be useful as a rescue light. For example, if you're lost at sea at night or maybe in a wood, you could shine this light upwards. It creates a beam and that would show people potentially where you are. So not particularly practical, but it is amazing to use and a great way to impress your mates who might still think that a mag light diesel from 1995 has an impressive beam. As always, links in the description below if you want to know more. As you might know, if you're a regular viewer of the channel, I use AirTags to keep track of my gear. And this is one accessory I've been waiting for. This is the Tag Vault Surface from Elevation Lab. Now, Elevation Lab make the Tag Vault, which I use on my keychain. And I really like this because it's waterproof and it's also very tough and it conceals the air tag in plain sight. The tag vault surface has similar properties in that it is fully waterproof and somewhat covert in that it's not obvious that there's an air tag in here. So it simply attaches to any flat surface using this 3M very high bond tape and then the top and screws the air tag goes in there and then we've got an o-ring here to keep the moisture and any water out. Now, having had skis stolen before, to me, that would be a great use case for these, but also camera gear cases. And in the case of vehicles and boats, you could really conceal this where it would never be found. I wondered if the case would silence the beeping of the air tag when activated. So here is a naked air tag. This is what it sounds like. And here is one in the vault. So it does reduce the sound a little bit, but not as much as you might think. And that's not such a big problem anyway, because if you're attaching this to a large item, it's not the sort of thing you're going to lose around the house. In terms of price, I'm in the UK, but I purchased these from the US. The price for a four pack is $25. I think a two pack is around 15 and on their own they're about $10. So there you have it, another use for your AirTag. This is the Muzen Bluetooth Wild Mini Speaker inspired by something military and vintage. And I have to admit, I really do like this look. Now I've had my eye on this for a while, but what pushed me over the edge to buy it was when I found out it was made out of metal, when I thought from the pictures I'd seen that it must be made out of plastic. And I have to say, I'm very impressed with this. 
Even the packaging and presentation is a pleasant surprise. And immediately it feels great in the hand. It's solid and weighty, and it does feel like a piece of military hardware from World War II. All the switch gear here is also metal. In fact, I can't find any plastic on this at all. I assume this reflector here for the light is plastic, but it actually feels like glass. We have a volume control here, which is very accessible even with gloves on, and it makes a very satisfying clicking sound when you rotate it. This is the on off switch here. You press down and hold it to switch this on, and then you get this glowing light on the top here, which you can't actually turn off, but it's not too much of a distraction. Then if you press the button up, it activates the Bluetooth syncing. You only need to do that once when connecting to a new device. And if you press and hold the button in, it switches on this as a light. Press it again, you get a slightly dimmer light and press it again and you get a rather unnecessary SOS flash in mode. Now, I'm not normally a big fan of adding to the core functionality of gear without good reason, but the addition of the light here, I think works well. The switch here has a rotary function to skip forward or backwards through tracks. And this has a small amount of play when you push it on the side. And that's the only quality question mark I've found here. And there's a center switch in the middle here and that acts as a play pause button, which also has a satisfying click in use. The Bluetooth syncing was seamless and quick. You just press the button up there, it comes up on your phone, you select it and then it's worked ever since. So no problems there at all. There are rubber feet on the bottom, to stop it sliding around and also on the back and it doesn't slip around either. So some really nice detail there. And there's a metal attachment point there, so you could attach it via a carabiner or a strap to a bag. This is the charging point here underneath this flap. And unfortunately, as you can see, it's micro USB, and that points to the fact that this speaker has been around for a while. The flap is metal, again, nice to see with a rubber insert, and that helps with the weather protection. And the speaker as a whole is weatherproof with an IPX rating of five, so that means okay in the rain, but not in the pool. And be aware this thing will definitely not float. The sound quality is surprisingly good for the size. Now I'm not really going to demonstrate that partly because I haven't got any license free music to hand and I don't want to annoy YouTube. And also because it wouldn't make a lot of sense because it would obviously not convey through the microphone, the level of bass and volume and so on and so on. But what I can tell you is that it sounds really good. Now, as you can see, it's actually really small and that's part of the appeal. But as you'd expect, the bass response is always gonna be a challenge. Overall, however, it does a really good job and this thing goes really loud without too much distortion. Audiobooks and podcasts sound particularly good. This size makes it ideal for travel, although if lightweight travel is your thing, you'll have to factor in the weight of this, which is 250 grams or 8.9 ounces. Battery life is reported to be 10 hours from the internal non-replaceable 800 milliamp hour battery, although I've not had chance to test this yet. Overall, I really like this. I love the design, the size, the quality of construction. The sound is really good and everything seems to work really well. The biggest downside to this has to be the price, which in the UK is £95 and about $100 plus tax in the US. And there's no doubt you can get more of everything for less money from better known brands, but it won't look or feel like this. Now, this might look like a 38 caliber bullet, but it is in fact a magnetic release keyring. And this is from a company called Exotac, who are well known for innovating in the everyday carry market. And I've featured several of their products in earlier videos. And this is interesting to me because I use something similar every day on my keys. I currently use this arrangement from Keysmart, a strong magnetic key change that allows me to swap between different cars and keep my house keys and AirTag and car keys all together. This ExoTac version performs the same function, but has an interesting feature that gives it an advantage, and it's this. 
one end slides into the other before coming into contact with the magnet and this means that sideways force doesn't separate the keys it has to be a straight on force to pull them apart now if we compare that with the key smart sufficient sideways force will separate the keys and in real world use that means that every so often the keys become unintentionally separated whereas the exo tack stays in place better and the exo tack works in conjunction with the free key slim system allowing you to quickly swap out keys without that fingernail breaking experience associated with a split ring key ring so this works really well and i think it looks pretty cool and the price is around 14 pounds or 16 dollars if you want to see some more multi-product videos then check out this playlist here and take your pick that's it for this one thank you as always for watching have a great day and i'll see you in the next one